All praises to Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Basham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalawam to the, to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson talking about how women and children are not going to be exempt from the day of Yahweh's wrath. All right, and the reason why I'm doing a particular video on that man is because women have got this thing about them, right, in particular, even more so than children, I would say, right? Women have got this thing of, uh, that they have, man, this kind of arrogance to where they feel like they have an invisible shield around them and nobody can't tell them anything that they're doing wrong and neither do they feel like anything physical is allowed to happen to them, whereas even children do not have that invisible force field to a certain degree as the same level as a woman by where they think that they are invincible to all things because children when they're doing things wrong get smacked sometimes in this world man right they get smacked even by their female parent man by their mother right but women have got this arrogance in this world by where they think that they can't be checked or can't be told anything that they're doing wrong right and i'm here to do a lesson that let to let you women know man that you ain't going to be exempt from the date of wrath to come neither are children going to be exempt right you can't it's not going to be older too young to receive judgment <coughs> from the day of the lord so spare them no they've they've committed iniquity just like how everybody else has committed iniquity man because nobody don't have a problem with saying things about men nobody doesn't have nothing to say when men are getting rebuked man Nobody doesn't have nothing to say when men are getting judged, right? Whenever, in fact, whenever something happens to a man, right, that seems unlawful, people try and find out things about that man's lifestyle in order to find out a reason why he deserved it. But they won't do it to a woman, though. False witness can get, can get made on a man and he ends up in prison and the woman that's accused that man of things her um her um reliability is very questionable. Yet she's still able to get that man sent down to prison, man. So I'm here to do a lesson to let you women know, man, that you and your children ain't exempt from judgment, man. Ezekiel chapter nine and verse four, and Yahweh said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not, I, ne, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men, which were before the house. <coughs> so what's that saying, man? Verse 4 is saying that Yahweh set a a mark of thawa on the forehead of the men that sighing and crying for the abominations that are done in the world. And it's very rare that you'll even hear women rebuking what's going on in the world, man. They're just rebuking that they can't have the luxuries of whatever society they're in. That's all they do. And that's why expecting for women to be righteous is a joke, to be honest with you, because they're not, bruv. Let's just be real, they're not righteous, man. And if there's one or two women out of every 20,000 women that you see that's righteous, well, that's not enough to even be, like, worth mentioning, man. That's not even enough to be worth mentioning to where you have to change your speech to say that women are righteous now. That's not enough of a percentage. Verse 6, Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark, and begin at my sanctuary. Then they begin at the ancient men, which are before the house now. The scriptures even speak about the scriptures even speak about disciplining your your children, man. Right? The scriptures speak about disciplining your children, but somewhere along the line in this world, women have think that they're they're exempt from any kind of talking about anything that regarding them, man. Let me find that scripture. The scriptures speak about disciplining your son, man. Now where is that? Where is it? Here we go. This is Sarat chapter 30 and verse 1. He that loveth his son, causeth him oft to fill the rod, 
that he may have joy of him in the end. So the scriptures even speak about disciplining your son, right? But because the scriptures speak on these kind of things, right? On, on disciplining children, the scriptures even speak about disciplining your daughter as well. In it in later on in Sarak, right? And it's a different techniques that the scriptures give. But women and women and women are not exempt from judgment, man, neither children, because the scriptures even speak about how if it's when you, if your child if you beat your child early on in their life, that you'll have enjoyment of them in their latter days, man, when they're an adult. Now that doesn't mean that you're just supposed to smack your child and go upside their head, man. Right? But this society doesn't even teach about any kind of discipline to the children, man. And then when when the children end up end up old, right? And then they're they're losers, and they ain't got no kind of no kind of um moral co moral compass. Everyone's always acting surprised. And then you've got all these Israelite women out here, right? <coughs> you've got all these Israelite women that raised up their children in single parent homes, right? And the, and they raised up mothers and daughters, right? They raised, excuse me, they raised up sons and daughters. Right, so let me say it again, man. You've got all these. You had all these for the past, like maybe five decades, man. You had several households of Israelites that was raised up in single parent households, and these mothers raised both sons and daughters. Then you had another mother in another house doing the same thing, and then somewhere along the line, these women have got the nerve and the attitude and the arrogance to try and complain about the state of affairs of our society when they're the ones that raised all of these sons that are out here. And they're the ones that raised all of these daughters that are wicked as well. So who's to blame? They want to blame the Israelite man when he's not in the house. And then they want to blame, take the credit if the Israelite man was in the house and something good happened. And it's funny how these Israelite moms will, will boast in their son if he's a LeBron James, if he turns out to be a LeBron James or something like that. Right? <clears throat> when all they did... All they might have did was talk him to the basketball centre. That's not enough to, for you to get credit for him becoming the greatest basketball player ever. That's not enough, but the, the child will give credit to the mum. But then the child don't want to blame the mum when he's a flop, though. The child will say, my mama did her best, my daddy weren't this, my daddy weren't that. And that's what I mean, and that's what's caused for these women to think that they're exempt from judgment, man. But the scriptures... Say otherwise, and let me go to another example, man. Right, let me go to a scriptural example because with the children are not going to be exempt from judgment, neither, man. Children are not going to be exempt from what Yahweh is going to bring on the earth, man. Whether they think they are or not, they're not going to be. They're not going to be, man. This is Genesis chapter 6 and verse 3. And Yahweh said, My spirit will not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days. And after that, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. And they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which are of old men of renown. And Yahweh saw, and Yahweh saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. And that every imagination of their thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Now, women will think that that means that there weren't no women doing wickedness. Obviously, that ain't true. Because the reason why even this stuff took place is because of what Eve did. Verse 6, And it repented Yahweh that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And Yahweh said, I will destroy man whom I have created from off the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing and fowls of the air, for he repenteth me that I have made them. So back then when that took place, would there have been women and children there? Yes, there would have. Right? How do we know that women existed back then? Because there was women on the ark. Four women on the ark, man. Right? There was four women on the ark. There was Noah and his three sons. That's four men. And every single one of them had a wife. That's four women. And that's why when people get arrogant... If anyone ever gets arrogant and thinks that Yahweh needs any of us, man, he was able to repopulate the whole earth with eight people, man. You understand which really he repopulated it with six people because Noah didn't have any more children after that. 
But Noah was the reason why all those other seven people even got on the ark. Because he found grace in Yahweh's sight, man. So Yahweh spared what was of Noah. Verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. So back then, children would have been getting judged, man. Children drowned to death back then. Women drowned to death back then. So why is it not going to be the same now? Right? Because people say, oh, now nah, that was... Let me get this. Let me get this. Because people don't know, man. They don't know. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9. The thing that hath been is that which shall be, and the thing which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So just like how a time came back then, where the whole world got judged. A time's coming now where the whole world is going to get judged. Now, there is going to be a slight difference because in the time in the past, that judgment came by water. But this time, the judgment's coming by fire. This time, it's coming by fire, man. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36. But of that day and hour, knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so also shall the coming, so also, so so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in those days they were, they were before. For as in those days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Now the whole marriage thing, according to what this society is saying, now is changed. So you know you've got some arrogant women out there. That have been trying to get a man's money and make him spend a million pounds on a wedding for a woman that weren't no virgin before he got with her, right? Then they've got the whole seating arrangements ready. They got the, the the shelled almonds that they're gonna hand out at the end of the wedding and all that. They got all these things that they want to hand out, you know. They got all this stuff that they want to try and use to glory in themselves to try and make their female friends jealous that they didn't want to get that they couldn't find a man to get married to. You know, that's the kind of stuff that happens in this world. But they, them women ain't exempt from judgment, man. They ain't exempt from judgment. Neither are the children that they're going to give birth to either. If they're wicked, they ain't exempt from judgment neither, man. And let me prove that, man. The people say, oh, man, what's my man talking? We don't know what he's chatting about, man. man, man. Well, well, we'll see if I don't know what I'm chatting about. Because I know what's in this Bible, man. This is Sirach chapter 41 and verse 5. The children of sinners are abominable children, and they that are conversant in the dwelling of the most, excuse me, and they that are conversant in the dwelling of the ungodly, the inheritance of sinners' children shall perish, and their posterity shall have a perpetual reproach. So their whole genealogy has got a stain on it, man. Wicked people's genealogy has got a stain on it. Verse 7. The children will complain of an ungodly father because they should reproach for his sake. So there's children out there, right? And that doesn't necessarily mean that these children are young, but there's children out there that are going to be judged for their father's sake, man. So children are exempt from what's coming, right? The children that are 40 years old, that parents were Edomites, they ain't exempt. Neither are the children that are 10 years old exempt. Neither are the ones that are four or five Neither is the newborn exempt, man. During the time when Yahweh brought the plague of the firstborn on Pharaoh and the Egyptians, he even did it on the animals. He even did it on the animals, if I'm not mistaken. If I'm telling that story wrong, someone correct me on that. If you put it in the comment board. But to my knowledge, he put it on the animals too. And there would have been firstborns, newborns, children within the womb that would also receive of that plague. Now, is, is Yahweh unrighteous for doing that? Yahweh forbid. Yahweh forbid. <coughs> Verse 8. Woe be unto you, ungodly men, which have forsaken the law of the Most High. For if ye increase, it shall be to your destruction. And if ye be born, ye shall be born to a curse. And if you die, a curse shall be your portion. So the curse is going to happen to y'all no matter what, man. And that what curse is it talking about? The curse of Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, man. If you if you if you if you die, you're getting them curses. 
you're going to come back and get them the same way, man. If you're born, well, there's a chance that the curse is going to come on you. When you're born, you, you can't escape it, man. Because just like how we face the curses, you're going to have to face the curses. But in the time I'm talking about, in the time to come when they, all these judgments take place on the earth, man, women are not going to be exempt from these things, man. Neither the children. We're going to see some things take place on this earth where we're going to realise exactly that Yahweh isn't you no know, respecter of persons, man. That he don't care whether, oh, he's young, isn't he? Goo goo gaga. No, ain't none of that going to be happening. Or, 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 oh, man, that woman's fine then Amar. Nah, that don't matter. She's going to get judged then Amar too. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 14. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draweth nigh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another, and sword in their hand. So when this kind of stuff's taking place, right, men don't really care about women, and people can say, okay, Judith walked across the battlefield, and men stopped fighting. Okay, they did stop fighting, but you know what happened after that? They carried on fighting. And ain't no woman in this modern times right now, cut like that, man. Women, women, when they try and break up fights, now if you find on the internet, you see the women get it too, man. The women catch some of the hands too. Verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. And there's men, there's men out there that have got a grievance with women out here. You understand? There's a whole industry... A whole um a whole thing called Mugtau, which is called which the abbreviation is Mugtau, but what it stands for is men going their own way. And this has happened because there's men out there that are aggravated with the arrogant nature of women. So what do you think those all those Mugtau people and all that, what do you think their mindset is gonna to be to women if they have the course of their actions to stand in their own power? Is it gonna be positive or negative? What is it gonna be? Are they going to be happy with women in that time or are they going to be angry with women in that time? Men that have been falsely accused of R-A-P-E, is their mentality going to be happy towards women or unhappy towards women? Men that have had women commit adultery on them and then that man's had to lose half of everything he had and had to end up moving back into his parents' house while the woman's living in the house with his children and all that and bringing another geezer in there that ain't doing half the things that she was moaning down his ear, trying to get, trying to use as an excuse as to why she committed adultery on him for. You see? So are those men going to be angry towards women in that time or happy? Verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able, for because of their pride the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Now, who's more? who's got more pride, man? Men or women? Who? If we're being real, man, who's got more pride? Is it men or is it women? And everybody knows the answer to this. So there's no need, it's more of a, that's more of a rhetorical question. <coughs> Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbour, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. So the, one of the reasons why women get away with a lot of stuff in this world is because men have pity on them, man. And men have mercy for them. Because they understand that they're weak and that they're fragile. And that when even though a woman might deserve to get gone upside her head, men don't do it because they know that that woman could damn near end up back in the spiritual realm, man. Or the, whenever you see these women try and fight men on any of these YouTube videos or any of these street fights or any of that where women attack men and all that, or women's crazy enough to attack a police officer and then the police officer strikes her back, the woman goes from being vertical, standing up, to being horizontal in the air, damn near every time, and she's all on the floor before anything's even happened, man. Because they don't think that no, no kind of violence can happen to them, man. Whereas even children understand to a certain degree more than women, man. They have more of an acknowledgement of violence taking place to them than women do because children fight each other when they're young. When little children are in school and all this stuff, they fight with each other, man. They tease each other. They bully each other and all of that kind of stuff. They they fight each other, man. But women escape that. 
this world makes women be the most exempt from any kind of judgment or rebuke, man, which is uh, outrageous, considering the Bible says that they're the most wicked. So when you've got the most wicked people running around the earth, not being able to be judged or told anything what they're doing about what they're doing, well, of course, you're going to have a world like this that's extremely wicked, where people don't know how many genders they are and where they don't know nothing. Of course, you're going to have a world like this, man. But this lesson is about letting you women know that you ain't going to be exempt from the judgments to come, man. You're not going to be exempt from that. Yeah, how I don't care how fine you are. Oh, there's not a particular, there's not a particular measurements that you got to meet, meet to, um, you know what I mean? Oh, this woman's got a 34 double Ds and she's got a 26 inch waist and her hips are 38, 38 inches wide. So she can't get judged because she's too fine for that. Oh, her skin's too caramel for that. Oh, she's got some hazel eyes. She's got some green eyes now. She can't get judged. She's too fine. Oh, that woman's too fine, man. She's got 31, 31.553 followers on Insta. So she can't get judged because she's met that. She, she broke that range of 20 plus Instagram followers. So she's exempt from judgment. No, no, that's not how it's going to work, man. Verse 19 again. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbour, but shall destroy their houses with a sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Now, when there's lack, men don't care about none of that, um, she's fine talk and all of that. They don't care about none of that, oh, the children need some and all of that. When there's a real lack, I'm not on about when it's a when it's a war zone and there's kind of still extras. I'm on about when there's a real lack, man. When there's a real lack, of things that's necessary to sustain. The children get left behind, man. The women get left behind. And when you read the book of Lamentations, you can hear, you can read about some of that stuff that was happening to us. You can read about some of it. And let me see if I can find the scripture that I'm looking for, man. Let me see. Here we go. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 4. The tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for first. The young children ask bread and no man breaketh it onto them. So people don't care when it goes bad, man. Because what, the, what, what are them children trying to ask for when they're asking for bread and for, for sustenance? And a suckling child is a baby. What is a chuckling child trying to ask for when there's a lack? They're trying to ask for breast milk. But when, if a mom's too malnourished, she ain't even got the milk to give, Right? And if she does have a certain amount of milk, that drains the mother. So she'll be like, man, nah. And in a time of lack, the mum might drink her own milk, man. And people might think that's funny. These are the kind of things that's going to happen, man. These are the kind of things that's going to happen. It happened to us. If it happened to the Israelites, who's the most loved nation, how much more is it going to happen to all of these other heathen nations? Well, to all these heathen nations, and to, in particular, es Esau, when they're the hated. Let me read it again. The tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for first. The young ass bread, and no man breaketh it unto them. So in ancient Israel, when we was catching hell, when our wars were sieged, we was sieged in, the, in, our, in our kingdom, we couldn't get out, right? They built walls around it. They, 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 was, they kept us locked in there, man. We couldn't escape, man. And they just starved us out. These are some of the things that was taking place. But in the time to come, it's going to be even worse than that. In the day of Yahweh's wrath, it's going to be worse than that. And there's going to be little children that are going to be hungry, right? And their own parents are going to be like, nah, I'm not giving you no bread. Because they're going to try and use so-called logic according to what they think and be like, well, this child is more of a burden in this time, right? This child is more of a burden. For the group because they're not strong to really do it they can't really do nothing and they just more receive everything than they then they give in this group so it's more it makes more sense for them to not have any bread that's not how it's going to start initially when there's still abundance and people can go and ramsack a store and all of that they'll make sure that the kid gets loaded but as there starts to be a real lack of things that's not going to be taking place anymore man and the mother He's going to be evil in her eyes towards her child, man. And she's not going to give unto them. You understand? And that's going to be a part of the curses coming upon the heathen nations, man.
Because that's what it speaks about in the curses. Let me get it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eyes shall be evil towards the, towards the husband of her bosom and towards her son and toward her daughter and toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet and toward her children which she shall bear for she shall eat them for the want of all things secretly in the siege and in straightness where if thine enemy shall distress thee in thy gates. Now that's took place to our people, man. When you can read about it in ancient Israel, we went through the curses and the mothers was eating the children, man. But there's also still that curse on us right now where the woman has got an extreme hatred towards the man. Now, how is this kind of thing going to play out in the time to come when all hell breaks loose? Well, the woman not having, having a, um, have, the woman having an evil way to, towards her husband can be, okay, the woman sees that her husband isn't that physically strong, right? She's not that physically strong. So she tries to think, you know what? I'm going to plot for a, for a come up out here because I don't trust that this man can protect me from this stuff. So she tries to go over with a guy that's stronger. That's the kind of stuff that's going to be happening, man. And don't say it can't happen. Don't say that kind of stuff can't happen because I remember hearing about a an attack that took place in Sunderland in the UK within the last three weeks, man. And there was a couple that was on their first date, man. That was on their first date, right? Walking down the street. The couple's in their 20s or something like that, like 20, 21. They was walking down the street and some 17-year-old guy must have took a liking to the woman and he beat the hell out of the man that she was with, man. And then on their first date, he beat the hell out of him, man, right? And then the woman said, oh, I'll do anything if you'll just leave him alone. And I, I don't think I need to say what the guy said to her that she that he wants her to do in order for him to leave her alone. Now, if a woman has gone for, goes through that, right, she's going to realise that that man that she's with can't protect her. You see? Or if another woman sees that kind of thing take place to another woman, but then the type of man that she thinks is the guy that's necessary to survive ain't going to be the same. You see? So she'll abandon her husband that she has, and in doing that, also abandon the children or the, or the woman might have been left with her children and she starts realising that there's scarce food so she sneaks off to the side and eats the last tin of beans man. <coughs> and the children are talking about mommy can I have some mommy I'm hungry and she tells them shut up and this might have been the most loving mum before the collapse of the society took place and that's what these people don't understand man women are not going to be exempt from the time from the time to come, man. Women are not going to be exempt from the judgments to come. They're not going to be. They're really not, man. They're really not going to be exempt from the judgments to come. Second Earth chapter 15 and verse 16. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So they're not going to be listening to what their leaders are telling them. How much more are people going to not be listening to the everyday civilian, the everyday man? The everyday woman and the everyday child, they ain't going to care. They ain't going to care, man. Verse 18, for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. <coughs> now, men built every society that women have ever lived in, right? Any society that women have ever lived in in peace, men built that. And what is one of the main slogans that women say right now? They don't need no men. That's one of the things they say. Yet there's several men that they ignore every day that they consider as invisible that they are needed. That if these men was not there and the safety net of these men doing their jobs was taken away, this whole society would change instantly. You see? Verse 19, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbour but shall destroy their houses with a sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Now with all those things that I just said, about the famines and how women are going to change from being loving, kind mothers, man, that would have done anything for their children. They're going to become evil, man. Let me read it again, man, the kind of things that's going to be taking place. Now, this took place, and this is Jeremiah talking about what... Let me just make sure it is. It doesn't even say... But it is Jeremiah, man, talk, talking about the things that he saw, right? If I'm not mistaken, man. But this stuff happened already. 
and it's going to happen again because I already read that there's no new thing under the sun. The Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 4 again. The tongue of the suckling child cleaveth to the roof of his mouth for thirst. The young children ask bread and no man breaketh it unto them. So that's the judgments, that the type of thing that's going to be happening unto the women right there. <coughs> that's the type of things. Verse 10. The hands of the pitiful, pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. So the, what's that saying, man? That's talking about cannibalism, man. The hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children. They were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. They ate them. You understand? So these are the kind of things that's going to be taking place again in the time to come. There might be three people in a hut somewhere in the woods, no food in sight. And the mom thinks, you know what? Desperate times call for desperate measures. And she eats the child, man. But because she women, women have that thing naturally in them where they don't want to forward nobody else. If there's three people around, she's gonna make the other person eat too. But then when there's when there's only her around and one of her children, she might just eat the last child, man. And don't think it's a joke. Don't think, oh nah, what this guy's talking about can't happen. It's going to happen, man. These kind of evils are going to happen. Women already get rid of their children now. You understand? They go to the doctor, have one leg facing east, have the other leg facing west, and they get the kid calipered out, man. Disgusting. So you think they wouldn't eat their child? They already are, are so, so for children being taken out of the earth. Wearing t-shirts with blood on them and all that. Saying it's not a baby and all that. It's just, it's not a baby until it's been born and all that. My body, my choice and all this. Right? So you think that these same women that think like that and talk like that wouldn't harm a child? They already do. They already do, man. Now, let me get this. Because all these things that I mentioned are some of the things that Yahweh was talking about when he says for these women to rise up. <laughs> That are at ease. Because <coughs> these are some of the things that are gonna, they're going to be going through, man. Isaiah chapter 32 and verse 9. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Many days and years shall ye be troubled, ye careless women. Because they're careless. They think that they ain't nothing that they can't use their beauty to escape from. And then when it happens that when it happens that their beauty don't cover what they're trying to do, they're always shocked. They're always shocked, man. So they might get pulled over by a cop, right? And they come with that arrogant attitude, um, like, what's your name and badge number? Right? The cop ain't even finished saying what he's going to say. But they're trying to think that, listen, I know how to do this. Because it's worked the last 50 times. But that 51st time, it don't work, man. It don't work and then they get judgment. That that time the time of men, women and children first is gonna be taken away, man. Because there's gonna be some women that was out there talking about some single life this, single life that, hot girl summer. And there's gonna be another family that's got the man that and the woman's humble now, and it's got the children. And that man is gonna overcome that woman that's single by herself and be like, man, you ain't you ain't got no covering, man. You're out of here. That's going to happen. Women ain't going to be given the leeway. Women are going to have food. in their, They might have food in their house, but the people are going to come and steal it, man. They ain't going to care that you're a woman. There ain't going to be nobody with a phone pointing at them saying, that's a whole female. That's a whole female. They ain't, no one ain't going to care about none of that. And the women ain't going to even care about a little child. Because women are not as nice and kind-hearted as people think they are, man. That's part of their acting skills, where they do all of that. Verse 10. Many days and years shall you be troubled, ye careless women, for the vintage shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Tremble, ye women that are at ease. Be troubled, ye careless ones, strip you and make you bare, and go to sackcloth upon your loins. And here's another thing to mention as well, man. A lot of people that think that they're women so righteous and all of that, right? When all hell breaks loose, don't be surprised if they 
or show themselves to be a demon, man. Don't be surprised, man. Don't be surprised if people show themselves to be demons in that time, man. Don't be shocked. Don't be pricked to the heart, man. Because it's easy for people to be like, oh, yeah, what you're saying in the Bible, I believe that if you're paying for every single bill in the house, you know what I mean? Or if she finds you handsome and all that, you know, it's easy for it then. Or if she, she's comfortable with you and she can dwell with you and that, and you don't give her too much stress and all that, and you're helping her in her life, it's easy for a woman to be humble then. But when all them things that you was doing have been taken away and your power to do them is taken away now, well, what is it saying then? You see? Verse 11, Tremble ye women that are at ease. Be troubled ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. They shall meant for the teats, for the present fields, for the fruit of the vine. So if children are going to be starving in the time to come, what makes women think they ain't going to be starving? Just the same way how Lamentations 4 and 4 said that the suckling child, right, is one in first and that no one's breaking bread unto them, right? And the child is weaker than the mother. That's the same way how the men are not going to be having mercy unto the women when the woman's weaker than the man. They ain't going to care. And a man that's stronger than another man is not going to be having mercy unto the man that he's stronger than because he ain't going to care. People are not going to care in the time to come. But people don't believe that though. They really think that, they really think that, nah, that could never happen, man. We'll never lose our humanity like that. Okay. You need to, some of y'all need to read what the, um, the great R-E-S-E-T, what they was talking about on that article, man. They've actually wrote down that that's going to happen. They understand that people have got that kind of mindset. They understand that when things take place that are of a crazy nature, that people are going to justify what they're doing by saying, oh, this is a different time. And I don't exactly remember exactly the subheading of what they have within that document, but I know that they mention it in there, man, because I've read it before. In that, the great R-E-S-E-T document, there's a portion in there that speaks about how people are going to change their whole way how they handle things in a situation where there's a lack. They know. You think these people haven't studied World War I, World War II, and ancient wars, and ancient times of chaos, and ancient societal collapses. You think that when that, the um 2020 scandal came through that they didn't not they didn't know what people was doing probably watching people from satellites and all that particular areas that they've set up as like miniature test zones for certain things that they want to do and saw how people act in there and said okay well if we did this on a mass scale then that would be how they'd act and respond you think they did that You think they ain't did that, man? This is Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 15. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through, and everyone that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled, and their wives ravished. Now, that's not a nice thing to go through, man. That's not a nice thing to go through. Now, verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Their bows also shall dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. And there's many versions of the sword that this is going to be talking about, man. There's the sword of the modern day gun, right? And then there's the sword of the ICBM, man, the arrows that are not going to spare children. There's not going to be, there's not, the ICBMs ain't going to come. And then when the children, they see like the children there reverse and go back to sender and say, now nah, I'm not going to do it. And be like, start, be like Scarface. I told you, no kids. You know what I mean? They ain't going to do that. They ain't going to do that, man. Even Scarface, it was in the movie Scarface, how crazy that madman was, right? He had some kind of level of honor in him to be like, nah, I ain't going to hurt no children. You know what I mean? He said, nah, I ain't going to do that. And that's what ended up making him lose his life in that movie, which is just a movie. But the point I'm making is that he said no kids in that movie. But Yahweh is not saying that. Yahweh's ways are not our ways, man. Yahweh's going to say everyone that's gone against me in any kind of way that I've got a problem with 
he's going to get served up in the time to come, man. And yahweh has got the right to do that. No one can't tell Yahweh that he's evil if he does that, man. Because if you've got the power to give somebody a terrible death, right, make them forget it and give them another life, you make them come back again in another life and make them forget all that things that happened to them, then what's the problem? What's the problem? But I think I've made a point, man. Women are not going to be exempt. Women are not going to be exempt from the judgments to come, man. Isaiah to the 13 and verse 11. And I will punish the world for their iniquity and the wicked. Excuse me. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease. And I will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. And that goes for men, women and children. But what does the scripture say about who's going to rise out of this looking better? Verse 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Now, there's going to be several levels to this because just a man that's strong, right, to a basic degree, like a level five on the strength, you know what I mean? Just an average strength, you know, average size man is a stronger than the highest, damn near the highest rank of women in certain cases, man. That's going to be more better for a woman to be around that than for her to be by herself. So a man's going to be considered worthy then, right? But at the highest level, a man that believes in Yahweh Bar, Sham Yahweh Shai, he's going to be the greatest because people are going to be seeing things that's taking place with him, right? That nobody else seems to be getting away with. They're going to see the hang on. This guy was just outside Right, and uh, there's poisonous, there's poison in the air, and this man was just outside, but he needed to cross over, he needed to cross over the street where there's this poisonous thing that's been sprayed in the air, and he had to cross over to get over to the other side though, to get to where he's going, and he walked through. I just seen it, I seen him walk through, and everyone around him was dying, but he is not dead, neither does he look harmed. People are going to see things like that happen, man. They're going to be like, huh? People might see a man of the Lord walk through a, a building that's been set on fire, man. There might be some crazy pyromaniac throws a Molotov cocktail at a building. The whole building starts burning down and this man just walks out with him and his children or his, and his woman, right? Holding them all. They're all cl clinging onto him and ain't none of them on fire. And, and people just know that the reason why this happened is because of the man. And the man comes out the building praising Yahweh, praising Yahweh Shai, saying, Kal Halal, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. These are the kind of things that's going to take place, man. But who has, a, who has an imagination to think of on these things? Who has the imagination to think of all of these situations that can take place, man? Only certain people. But it's going to come a day where things that people can't, under, can't explain are going to happen, man. And hopefully I've made the point, man, that women are not going to be exempt from judgment. And the whole reason why I'm saying this, that women and children are not going to be exempt from judgment is so that hopefully fear can be stirred up in them and they can learn to repent, man. You have to repent. You have to turn back to the ways of righteousness, man. If you women out there, you know you've got a man that claims to be a Hebrew Israelite, right? Why are you giving him a hard time for? Why are you giving him a hard time if, you, if you're so-called claiming that you believe it too? Why are you giving him a hard time? Because that same man that some of you women are giving a hard time in the days to come, there's women out there that, have, there's women out there that really believe in the scriptures that they would love to be around you, some of you women, same husband, man. And in that day when that man has the power to choose multiple wives that's going to be really going starting off his nation in the kingdom what makes you think he might choose you still he might say you know what you've been too arrogant man so i'm not bringing you with me all praises to yahweh basham yahweh shai basham rakar kwadash double honors to the apostles and the elders of great millstone and shalom to the elect to the nation of israel shalom